it turned out that um, because the government is just really like another um, big firm, the labor supply is not affected at all. Okay, uh, so the no, you know the number of uh, the number of people who are in the um, labor force is the same. The job separation rate is the same in private firms and in the government. So there's just one separation rate for everybody. The job finding rate for workers is there's just one job finding rate. They apply to vacancies um, indiscriminately. So their probability to find a job is just the job finding rate that we had called f of theta. So really, on the work from the workers' perspective, the fact that you have the government, um, you know, doesn't change anything. You know, it's just going to give you a different amount of vacancies. But you know, if I give you a tightness, whether it's a tightness that the tightness is rich with only private firms, or the tightness is rich with only a big government, or the tightness is rich with a mix of private firm and a government, it really doesn't matter. You face some job finding rate. You have some separation rate. Um, you know, once the flows are balanced, you'll always get you know to the same uh, employment rate. Okay, so so labor supply is really not modified at all by the introduction of the government, uh, given that we assume that the government be behaves very much like a private firm. So the labor supply has the same expression as before, and it's going to give us the total um, amount of employment, both private and public, for a given tightness. And the expression is exactly the same as what we had earlier. It's f of theta, where f of theta is the job finding rate, theta being so labor market tightness, S, job separation rate, which applies to private firm and the government as well, plus F of theta times H. Okay, so this hasn't changed at all. What's key here is that L, the labor supply, it gives uh, so it's a labor supply that, that, that involves both um, private, you know, the private sector and the public sector. So that's private employment plus public employment. It's the total labor supply. So it's workers who work for private employers and plus public employers plus the government. This labor supply gives aggregate employment for a given tightness. It's not specific to private sector or public public sector. Okay, uh, and in fact, you know, when we represent our labor market using our equilibrium diagram, we're going to see in terms of aggregate employment. We're not going to separate um, between um, public and private employment. So labor supply is not affected. That's fine. Uh, that's good. It simplifies things. Labor demand is a different story. Uh, the aggregate labor demand, of course, is going to be directly impacted by the fact that now you have the government that tries to uh, employ workers. So our labor demand, the aggregate labor demand will be um, composed of two elements. So the aggregate labor demand now, because we also have public employment, will be private 
labor demand. So that's just the labor demand by firms. Plus public. Labor demand, and that's just the labor demand by um, the government. Okay, so ag aggregate, you know, the total labor demand would be private labor demand plus public labor demand. What is the private labor demand? Well, um, if you're a firm, the, your profit function hasn't changed compared to what we had before. You know, you have producers enter your production function, you pay your work away, you also have to have recruiters, the number of recruiters you need depends on tightness, you know, nothing has changed. So um, for a given tightness, the um, amount of workers that firm want to hire is exactly the same, you know, whether there is a government or not a government. You know, what, the only thing that matters from a firm's perspective is the tightness on the uh, labor market. Right? There is nothing that the government does that's going to affect uh, you know, besides affecting tightness, once you control for tightness, there's nothing that the government does that's going to affect a firm's behavior. So the private labor demand is the same as before. This function LD of theta that we had computed before. What is the public labor demand? Well, here we'll just assume that the government demands a certain, you know, a certain number of workers. So, so the government wants a public sectors of a given size, they want to hire a certain number of workers and that's just taken as given and we call it G, G for government. Okay? And G is just a parameter that determines policy. So our aggregate demand, labor demand will be the sum of the private labor demand, the same as before, and uh, just what the government does. And if we want the equation for this, you remember that um, so the, the private labor demand, of course, its shape will depend on the assumption that we make on firms, but here we'll, we'll stay within the standard assumption that we have in a matching model with, uh, with job rationing. So we'll assume that production functions concave, and we'll assume that um, wages are rigid, and so that's going to give us uh, alpha A. Gamma. If I use some wage utility, you know, I, I can also use a fixed wage, that's fine, it doesn't really matter here. Omega, the wage, uh, the level of the wage, 1 plus tau, theta, alpha, 1 over 1 minus alpha, plus g. Okay, and um, so this labor demand comes about because on the firm side we assume. So here we are looking at our kind of you know, model that we always use. So we are using at a matching model with job rationing so that our production function is concave, right? So output by firms to productivity times number of producers to power of alpha. And the wage is rigid. So that the wage is omega times productivity to the power of gamma, gamma less than one. Yeah, well, of course, all these things are positive. Okay, so that gives us our standard labor demand plus G. Okay, so now we are all set. We have an expression for the labor supply. We have an expression for the aggregate labor demand. So we can figure out what happens on the market uh, in equilibrium. So the labor market equilibrium is just slightly modified now because the aggregate labor demand is not only the private labor demand, it's private labor demand plus public labor demand is slightly modified. 
So the labor market equilibrium is described by LD of theta plus G, which is aggregate labor demand, total labor demand, and that has to be equal to the labor supply, which is the same as before. All right, so that's our new labor market equilibrium. And from this, you can infer the equilibrium tightness which will solve, um, which is going to solve that equation.